<laughs> hey, for more, I want to bring in Courtney Dominguez from Payne Capital Management. By the way, an organization I'm not affiliated with. You know, Courtney, it's not just rich people, right? I mean, it seems like all consumers on every single level sort of stepping it up. And that creates a market uh, where a whole lot of winners are out there. I mean, you know, we're seeing mm -hmm. old brick and mortar names like Kohl's, the number one performing stock last week. Internet names like Etsy. The question is, can this hold up? Will this go on throughout the year, throughout next year? Absolutely, I can. Um, I'm definitely on the optimistic side here. And I think when you look at some of the data, um, consumers have done a really good job of saving. They've saved about $1.3 trillion throughout the pandemic. And on top of that, consumers are coming in a lot less credit than they were in other recessions. So just to give you an idea, consumer credit is on track for its first decrease in a decade meaning people have saved a lot of money and paid down their debts, which is putting them in a really good position here as the economy reopens to be able to continue spending money, just as you're seeing in some of these reports, which actually is a really positive sign. Yeah, I mean, today, uh, L Brands was the number one percentage gainer for most of this session. Kohl's, the number one for all of week last week. And, of course, Cheryl mentioned Louis Vuitton. Uh, dry powder, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, well, I tell you yes. what they're doing with some of that dry powder. A record amount of money went to ETFs last month, and most of it into U.S. equity ETFs. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's huge. Contrarians, though, say it's a, it's a red flag. What are your thoughts? Is it positive or negative? I would say positive. Um, normally, I get the idea that contrarian, when everybody's flooding into the markets, that's not always a good thing. That might mean we're getting towards highs. But Charles, you and I have been talking for the last several months about how much cash is on the sidelines. And what we're finally seeing is people are finally able to breathe and say, OK, maybe we are going to see a positive economy going forward here and finally putting their money back to work. And that's kind of that catalyst that we've been waiting for. But this is only kind of the tip of the iceberg. We're still seeing record levels of money and cash on the sidelines. It still needs to make its way back in. And kind of anecdotally right. here, I do have a few clients who have been sitting in cash. I've had several just over the last two weeks come to me and say, all right, Courtney, we're finally ready. What should we do with it? And I see that as a really positive sign. Well, it seems like also a lot of that late money is coming into areas that hadn't worked, right? Energy has been number one since the collection. But small caps, the Russell 2000 hit a, a new high today. Is that the kind yeah. of place that people are looking? And do you think, that, yeah, opportunities there? Very much so. Um, small caps are really one of the areas that I'm very optimistic on. I think the idea is we could see 180% rebound in earnings for small caps next year. And that's about 10% above 2019 levels. So just when you think about some of that upside that still has to come, you want to look at these areas right. that can take off as the economy is reopening, and small caps are a big beneficiary of that, by all means. I got 30 seconds. Tell me what else you're focused on these days. Um, one of the other big areas that I think we haven't talked a lot about recently is we want to look at our foreign companies. I think specifically emerging markets I do find pretty interesting right now because we are seeing the China economy is growing, which is going to benefit your emerging markets. But a Biden administration very well could mean more government spending, which can decrease the dollar, which is a positive for those emerging markets. All right. We'll talk about emerging markets. I'm not a big fan. They haven't worked. They haven't outperformed the S&P since 2011. But the top five names are all Chinese names, and those have been winners. Courtney, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.